for our fourth question we have the monthly income in thousands of rupees of female and male nurses so the gender is also given and the monthly income of that nurse is given which gender can be said to be earning more so which gender can be said to be earning more so this is a layered question one is which gender can be said to be earning more and the second part of that question is can we be sure that there is actually a relation between gender and monthly income so the part 1 which gender can be obtained from identifying the mean of the income for the females and the mean of income for males and then comparing the mean but the second part where we have to establish whether gender and monthly income actually have any connection which is basically the correlation will tell us whether this difference in means is significant so for this we are now going to have to find out the mean of the female nurses salaries and the mean of the male nurses salaries so let's begin with female so let's identify our female data points here we have 3 and 4 and 5 This is six. This is seven. This is eight. This is nine. This is ten, and this is eleven. So we are saying there are eleven female nurses, and let's calculate their sum. So this would be forty-six. We are starting with forty-six, and then forty-seven will give us ninety-three. And forty will give us one hundred and thirty-three, and with forty-five we get one hundred and seventy-eight. Then this gives us two twenty-eight. This gives us two eighty-three. Then we have three forty-three. Then we have four one two. With seventy we get four eighty-two, and then with this we get five fifty-seven. Then another eighty, we get six hundred and thirty-seven. So, so the female sum is six hundred and thirty-seven, and there are eleven female nurses. Therefore, the mean of female monthly incomes is let's call it F bar equal to six hundred and thirty-seven divided by eleven. Which is roughly equal to fifty-seven point nine. Now, in the case of men, this is male, this is male, this is male. Again, male, 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 and lastly here another three. So we have nine males overall. Let's note down that here there are nine males overall. And for their sum again, let's do the counting on this side. So this thirty-four, this would be fifty-two. This gives us seventy-four. Moving on, here we have one hundred eight and one forty-four, and then this gives us one seventy-nine. Here, along with this twenty-eight, we get two hundred and seven. Plus forty-four is two fifty-one, and lastly with thirty-three we get two eighty-four. And so the sum here for the male nurses is two eighty-four, and we know there are nine of them. So let this be called M bar, the mean for male nurses. This is two hundred and eighty-four divided by nine, which is roughly again. Thirty-one point five five. So evidently, the female mean is better. And now we come to the second part of the question: Can we make such an inference at all? Is it 
okay for us to say that this gender is earning more is there that sort of correlation and that we can only find out by finding the point by serial correlation coefficient the rpv that is a point by serial correlation coefficient is y not bar minus y1 bar into the square root of p not into p1 divided by sx now what do these respective terms mean for that we need to first talk about the encoding of our gender variable as 0 and 1 so there are two kinds of genders here so we assign 0 to one and one to the other let's give 0 here to the female gender and let's make one for the male gender so this is the encoding that we are doing and y not bar would in that case be f bar which is the mean for the zero variable and y1 bar would be the mean for the one variable which is m bar that is our 31.55 and what is sx sx is the sample standard deviation of the monthly income variable so all these values here that we see in monthly income they have their own sta sample standard deviation and that is the value that we give to sx going further p not is the proportion for the zero variable which is number of zeros by the total number of values here the number of zeros here are 3 and 5 and 3 that gives us 11 so we have 11 divided by how many are the total there is an additional 3 3 and 3 which gives 9 so 11 by 20 the total is 20 so this is 0.55 and that would indicate p1 is equal to 9 by 20 which gives 0.45 so we have the values of y0 bar and y1 bar and p0 and p1 we are yet to find the sample standard deviation of the monthly income so let's do that we need to first find the mean for the monthly income which we can obtain by i'll call that value i bar the mean for monthly income which will be the sum of these two that is the total sum is the sum of these two so 637 plus 284 divided by the total number of observations is 20 so we get 921 divided by 20 and that is essentially 46.05 now what we do is we write down the deviations of these values from the mean from i bar so 46 is 0 0.05 away i am ignoring the signs because we are anyway going to square them and 47 is 0.95 away 40 is 6.05 away then 34 is 12.05 away 18 is 28.05 away 22 is 24.05 away 45 is 1.05 away 50 is 3.95 away 55 is 8.95 away 60 is 13.95 away 69 is 22.95 away 34 is 12.05 away 36 is 10.05 away 35 will be 11.05 away and 70 is 23.95 away 75 is 28.95 away 80 is 33.95 away 28 is 18.05 away 
44 is 2.05 away 33 is 13.05 away so these are all our deviations and we would like to square them all add them divide them by n minus 1 which in this case is 19 and perform the square root on that value in order to get the standard deviation which is this calculation here sigma i goes from 1 to 20 xi minus x bar the whole square divided by 19 the whole square root is equal to sx now i will not do this calculation of this numerator here what we do get for this is 5798.95 5798.95 divided by 19 that gives us square root of 305.2 roughly which is again roughly 17.47 so we finally have the value of sx as well we have P1, we have P0 and F bar and M bar anyway. So Y0 bar and Y1 bar are also there. So if we substitute all these values, Y0 bar minus Y1 bar will give us 57.9 minus 31.55. This whole thing multiplied by the square root of 0.55 into 0.4. Whole divided by 17.47. 26.35 into 0.4975, which is the square root of 0.55 into 0.45, divided by 17.47, which is 13.10. 9125 divided by 17.47 which is coming out to be very close to 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 is a fairly large correlation coefficient it's very close to 1 and it is positive so there is a strong positive correlation between gender and monthly income. In that case, we can safely say that the female nurses earn better than male nurses in that hospital.